Hey, hi, hello, my BPM creators. Nick here from BPM Create coming at you today with the topic of lo-fi. More specifically, what is lo-fi and how can we incorporate some of those classic lo-fi sounds into our everyday music production? So let's get right into it. Okay, so today we're gonna be discussing lo-fi beats, more particularly, how do we get more of a lo-fi sound into our beats if that's something uh, that you're going for. Um, so let's jump right in. I have in Ableton here, you'll see I have the uh, stems from this Lo-Fi Kit O2. Um, and this Lo-Fi Kit O2 is one of our amazing kits on BPM Create. You can go in, search Lo-Fi, you find a bunch of them. This is the one I found, and we're looking at Kit 2 from that pack. So that pack has construction kits in it, which are, we've looked at those before, they have kind of the stems of each element. So I'm gonna use the construction kit to kind of explain to you what can be done in your record to add more of a Lo-Fi sound. Okay, so let's kind of discuss what Lo-Fi means. Lo-Fi is an abbreviation for low fidelity. Um, and if you're not familiar with the differences between between low and high fidelity, um, it, it's really just, the low and high is, is an adjective. Fidelity is audio's ability to clearly be replicated, basically. Um, that's kind of like a rough definition of it. So if you're looking at Webster's or something, it's not gonna be identical. But the point is, is something that has high fidelity uh, something that records in high fidelity will capture the sound as close to the natural sound as possible if it's able to replicate the sound, if that makes sense. So for instance, a recording device that has high fidelity will record and replicate the sound as close to its actual sound as possible. On the opposite end, something low fidelity means that the fidelic nature of the sound is lower in the sense where you're actually using sort of destroyed, crummy sounds in a creative way to add this sort of moody feel. Let's jump into this kit and, and we'll talk about some of these elements and see how you can apply some of the techniques that we're using this kit to your own lo-fi beats and really, really, really get that lo-fi sound. So here I have this lo-fi kit and 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 you'll see I have it, uh, I have the stems from that kit broken down here into drums, melody, uh, and effects. And I'm gonna go through basically just each one of these groups and we'll kind of talk about tips and tricks that come up on, on, on and, and characteristics of this lo-fi pack that can really, really, really hone in your, your lo-fi um, palette, if you will, because there's certain sounds that work with lo-fi and there's certain sounds that don't. And, and, and we're definitely going to see how you can take a sound that, that doesn't necessarily work and make it something that fits into a lo-fi beat. Right off the bat, for me, lo-fi, I think low pass. That's how I kind of correlated to it. Low fidelity stuff usually doesn't have like, usually microphones that are not as good quality or gear that's not that good quality doesn't have as much information on the top end as you would prefer. So a lot of those kind of cheaper I instruments or microphones or synths or whatever have this kind of mid-rangey low past there's really nothing like past you know kind of 4k even that kind of range so when we're talking about lo-fi um I, I i like i said i immediately jump in my head to low pass and that's something that defines this genre this whole this whole type this whole sound of low fidelity is is really defined by kind of this low pass nature of the music so that's the first thing right off the bat just the utilization of a low pass filter, it can be as dramatic or as subtle as you want it to be. Um, you have to find what's gonna work in that, in that, in that range. But um, other than that, there are certain other characteristics um, in things like, let's talk about rhythm. Uh, in this drum section, let's, let's give it a listen, just hear kind of what's happening here. So as you're listening, you kind of hear this, this, this kind of dragging, almost like do, 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 do. it's not perfectly on grid. It's not on the one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two, it's one and two and one and two and one and two. And that, that kind of, I call it like that kind of like dragged hi-hat or that kind of dragged percussion that kind of like it's getting dragged along is so, so, so indicative of the lo-fi sound. I mean, pretty much every lo-fi beat you hear has this kind of like slow, kind of chugging hi-hat progression or top end or, or you know percussion that kind of stuff over time 
So let's just look at the, the perks here, and we'll, we'll listen to it with the metronome, because why not? So you can hear the percussion is kind of falling behind the metronome, and it's kind of it's kind of lagging, and and that in and of itself creates this groove that's there throughout the entire uh, drum arrangement. And so a lot of you might be listening, and be like Nick. Well, this let, let, like let's look at the kick and the clap, right? A lot of you might be saying Nick, there's some highs on that clap. It's that's where you get to be creative as the lo-fi musician is you're making the decisions on okay You know, I want this one element to cut through the mix the kick really doesn't ha ever have highs for the most part in in lo-fi beats You don't have that big punchy dubstep kick you have this kind of like low distorted mid-rangey thud That's that's more indicative to something like hip-hop than than you know dance music or, or that kind of stuff um, but with this clap uh, the whoever created this kit obviously wanted one element to kind of cut through this this rather low pass uh, sonic footprint that everything else kind of fits within so th that's one interesting thing to note is I could take Ableton's EQ and go in and and immediately I'm cutting basically at 2k and right there you could see it doesn't make uh, the clap go away in any sense. It just makes it sound a little bit more into the mix. Um, and so if we listen to the drum mix altogether, the, the clap or the high frequency, the air of the clap is definitely not as prominent as if I take the EQ off. But even the stuff that really should be the highest, you know, your cymbals and your hats and your percussions, that really airy kind of, you know, 8K up stuff, that that really should be your percussion. You can hear that that's, that's cut, it, it, or if not cut, at least shelved very hard. I mean, we can, let's look at the EQ, look at on the EQ. You have barely inf any information past, what is that, 4K? Barely any information up there for hi-hats. That's like unreal So th the fact that your 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 hats and your percussion are hovering in this sort of like, I don't know What is this? This is 1k? Uh, to 4k range is very odd. But again, that's those upper those high mids Kind of high-ish frequencies that you're getting into where where that mid-rangey low-pass lo-fi sound really comes in so it's a very distinct characteristic and you'll see that characteristic play out for instance let's look at the melody section here So you have two things. You have this, what's described as the main section wet. So I chose the wet stems because they have the reverb and the delay and the effects on it. So it really, again, creates this, this lo-fi vibe. So let's listen to the main section. You hear these electric pianos. Saxophone in the background, right? That, that very long decaying reverb saxophone adds a nice accent. So another characteristic that can really add a lo-fi sound is your melody choice. Um, usually this, this melody choice revolves more in the realm of like um, something closer to jazz than, than, than to like a, a harmonic minor uh, chord progression that you would find in like a future bass song or something like that. You, you, this is this falls more into the jazzy. It's like jazz and hip hop and low quality recording all kind of mixed in with each other in this really intricate palette. So your melody choice definitely sticking a little bit more to the jazz scale and the jazz flow of things is definitely going to add more of a lo-fi sound to your beats. And then so that's that electric piano kind of uh, uh, main section there. And then there's just a regular piano. Um, so that's kind of that, that so that's kind of that, uh, that electric piano-y stuff. Um, and I, I had in here, even though it's in the other section, I have that, that top E piano that's filling in that kind of upper frequency range you, you can listen to. 
You hear this nice reverb delay happening. So everything in the lo-fi genre is kind of flowing and interesting, and it's just a vibe. It's all about that, that kind of rainy Sunday vibe. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna look at is, is your track bed. If you look in my session here, you'll see that I have this, this section called effects. Um, and the effects section will contain that, that track bed. We'll give the track bed a listen to kind of give you the idea of what I'm talking about. And then I can, and then I'll explain it a little bit more. So if I go right here, let's solo the track bed. And it's a little quiet, so I'm going to bring it up by 10 dB for you. Adding this sort of soundscape to a record is very, very common in the lo-fi genre. Um, so in this particular track bed, or I have it marked here as vinyl bed, first, right off the bat, you can obviously hear some vinyl distortion going on. Again, something very common. I get we're, uh, That falls into that lo-fi, low-fidelity type thing. Vinyl distortion is usually seen as something like, oh, I don't want distortion, right? When when people were playing their vinyl records, it was like they were trying to get rid of as much vinyl distortion as they possibly could. They wanted the sound to be as clean as possible. Well, that was in a high fidelity system. In a low fidelity system, lo-fi, like we're doing now, having that, that texture and that vinyl distortion is really, really, really valuable to your lo-fi beat. So we covered vinyl distortion. That's something that you can really add into certain elements in your lo-fi beat that'll re that'll really enhance that that lo-fi kind of sound, that kind of vibe. And if we listen back to this, so I hear a couple of things when I'm listening to that. I hear almost like some rain. Uh, what I think is rain. Um, and, and I also, you obviously hear like some Spanish speaking going on. Um, so, you know, this is obviously a field recording that was done maybe at someone's house on a rainy day uh, in their backyard or like at a park or something, or maybe the, the field recording uh, of the, of the people speaking Spanish was just one thing. And then they, they added the rain on top of it. And then they added the vinyl distortion on top of that. When it comes down to your, to your track bed, it, it it's really just about creating a sort of sound, a, a, a natural organic soundscape. And that really segues into the kind of the last thing I have for you on how to add lo-fi sounds uh, to your beat. Um, and and th that is the use of organic sounds. Everything in this song, from the drums, to, to the track bed, so don't forget, fidelity has to do with the sound's ability to be replicated. So a lot of lo-fi stuff is rooted in field recording and the use of, uh, of sampling of organic sounds. So even just uh, instead of a hi-hat using some coins, like, uh, you know, some, some metal coins dropping into your hand or some, uh, you know, uh, some painkillers in a pill bottle or any of that kind of stuff, like sampling actual noises that aren't just little white noise hi-hats that you can, you know, were, you can tell were synthesized really, really, really enhances that lo-fi vibe throughout the entire record. And and it adds this kind of like homemade feel to the song that, that really is valuable uh, for people who are working in the genre. So just to recap, we've talked about the drums, we've talked about those lagging, dragging hi-hats, we've talked about low-pass filters, we've talked about how the differences between high fidelity and low fidelity, how low fidelity doesn't have so much high-end information on it, and if it does, it's pretty distorted, hence what we also have talked about is the vinyl distortion, right? And how that can add texture and that kind of stuff. Um, and we've talked about how adding organic sounds can really, really enhance that lo-fi sound in your beat. So if you deploy all of these little tactics all together in a nice little package, you will get a lo-fi beat, without a doubt. And on the other hand, just deploying some of these tactics can add a lo-fi edge to a beat you already have that maybe isn't necessarily in the lo-fi genre, right? Adding something like a vinyl distorted track bed underneath a house track 
might give that house track a little bit of that lo-fi vibe that you want. Maybe you don't want the you don't want the the hip hop kind of lagging hi hat drum uh, situation that's common in lo-fi beats. Maybe you want your house beat, but you want it to feel like a lo-fi house beat. Well, you can just maybe try adding that distorted vinyl track bend underneath, or try cutting some of that, you know, uh, 10k, 8k, 4k range like you know just kind of maybe shelving it down and seeing what that does to your house beat and a combination of any of these things applied to any genre will give you that lo-fi sound okay so i hope that you're able to really take this information and work it into your productions and i hope that you're able to add these lo-fi sounds into your music and incorporate them in a way that feels natural and works for what you're going for